What's up team, welcome back to my lab. It's your biggest fan of the real Casadero. And in this broadcast, I'm going to show you a way that I use YouTube that makes beginner's YouTube a little better too. So I'm here in my lab and on the TV in front of me, I'm watching this video from RJ Spina and this is on the channel, The Chosen 144. And the video is Command Money and Abundance like Merlin the Great, RJ Spina. Now, if you're into spirituality, great. If you're not, fantastic, whatever, it doesn't matter. What he's talking about here is basically the astrophysics of reality, but I'm not necessarily here to talk about that in particular. What I'm here to show you is our ability, how we can use technology in order to expand our minds. So what I've done is I've exited that video, but on the TV, I have history. So I'm going to go back into the here and I'm going to go into my library and it should show this video in here somewhere of RJ Spinia back here. I just have to find it. All right, so this this is it right here. So I'm going to play this and then I'm going to pause it. And what I'm going to do is on the computer, I'm going to hit this button on this iPad over here and this software that I'm using is called Stream Deck. And you can use it to control OBS or in OBS, this is the software that I'm using on the screen to record all of this. Or you can use it to open applications on your computer and do all sorts of different things. So I'm going to use it right now to open up the history for YouTube. So I'm just going to hit my YouTube history button. It's going to bring up the history on the screen, which you can see here now. And now we have this video. I'm going to grab this video. I'm going to click it so it doesn't play. And then I'm going to use a keyboard shortcut to copy this to my clipboard which is here so this is some clipboard software i use called paste and this enables me to copy multiple things from multiple different places what i'm going to do now is i'm going to take this and i'm going to open up my notes application this is an application i use called called obsidian and i keep daily notes in here so i'm going to go to my daily note these are all the notes that i've taken today all the thoughts i've had things like that and at the bottom of this, I'm just going to paste this note. And the idea is that at some point, the idea is that I come back at some point and I really take more notes on this and think about what he's saying. Now, some might look at this and go, well, you have a bunch of notes. How do you go through all of this stuff? Well, I try to watch things that I believe that are going to be beneficial to me. I have despite that I've said this, found myself watching things that are detrimental, they have a negative nature, and they aren't really beneficial to me as a person. So I have to watch that. And this is something that we all have to be careful of in this day and age, because everything, we're just bombarded with advertisements, there's information all around us, and we all have become unconscious advertisers for, believe it or not, the things that we say we don't like. And that's another reason why I'm recording this broadcast. This is me placing my energy on something positive that will help other people as opposed to focusing on any internal emotions that I'm having, which I understand I'm only having those because they are weakness leaving the body. We'll talk about those more in future broadcasts, but for this broadcast right here, we're just taking some notes. So once I have this down here, I can actually I can actually click these links so I can close this application and open it up on any day and click this link and it'll take me to the video and I can play it. And while it's playing, I can go back and I can capture notes and just place them in here. When that's all done, so let's see, for instance, there was something that he said that I wanted to write down. I'm going to capture it real quick. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go here and I'm going to hit this share button. And that's going to bring up this screen here. I'm going to hit the time and I'm going to hit copy. Now we've got this copy to our clipboard too, to that application. We're going to go back to our notes application and I'm using keyboard shortcuts to do all of this. I'm going to paste that in here. And what keyboard shortcuts are, is they're just special key combinations. I'm going to bring up a program called Keycaster and it's going to enable you to see these combinations I'm using. So to switch back and forth, I just hit command and tab and you can see what those look like. And you should see symbols like this on your keyboard, probably down to the bottom, close to the space bar. So once we've copied this in this note right here, he's actually talking about the splitting of energies. So he says, imagine and I'm going to see if I could take some notes in a different kind of way. He says, imagine energy as a tree trunk. All right. So it didn't pop up there. 
what I have is I have a tool that's going to help us take some notes without having to type all this stuff out. So I got this microphone. I'm going to turn this microphone on here. And when I hit the dictation button on the computer and I talk into the microphone, it's going to record what I'm saying. So he talks about imagine yourself as being a tree and energy is the trunk. Every time your energy splits off, think of that as another branch. So as your tree is growing, the more branches you have, the more energy is being sapped away from the main portion of the tree, from the trunk. Your goal, the reason why you're here in this life, in this existence, is to learn to focus that energy. You, and only you, should be able to decide what branches exist on your tree. This tree that we're talking about is the tree of life. So now that we have all that captured, what we can do is we can take this and we can turn this into a note. So I'm going to put a line up here and I'm just going to say, let me zoom in. And we're going to say command money and abundance, A, B, U, A, abundance. like Merlin and I like Merlin. So I'm going to put that there. And then under here, I'm actually going to put, I'm going to copy this. I'm going to put Merlin again. I'm going to see if I have Merlin somewhere in my notes. And I don't think I do. So Merlin was a magician. This is another thing that I do when I'm studying. So inside of this application that I'm using, which is called Obsidian, I have a plugin for chat GPT. So this is an AI system that gives us the ability to ask questions so essentially so we're just going to say tell us everything that you know about merlin the magician both historical and fiction along with any figures in history whom are said to be the basis for Merlin. All right, so this is going to give us an answer. And what we're gonna do is when it's done is we're gonna take this answer and we're gonna put it in our notes. And when we put it on our notes, we're going to study it while it's in there. We're going to make any alterations. We're going to link anything. And this is going to solidify it in our minds. So we are actively learning as we go through this process. I'm going to switch back to this regular page. So we've got Merlin here. I'm going to turn this into a brand new note. So now we have this note here, which is going to make some cosmetic adjustments. And if we go back to our AI, it should. What happened here? Something has gone wrong. All right, so I'm just going to copy this and paste this down here and we're going to. All right, so there's our answer right there. It's still working. Well, actually, it started over. OK, so we'll grab that. We don't need this anymore so we can get rid of this. It's writing the answer that we just asked for again because the first one didn't show up. We're going to paste this here and now we can zoom in and we can work on this. Merlin. So Merlin was a legendary figure best known as the wizard or magician featured in Arthurian legend. So this is where we get to start adding more information. So Arthurian legend, this is what we want to know about. So we're going to copy this, going to make this a new note, and then we'll go back to our AI and we can say, tell us everything you know about Arthurian legend, both historical and fiction. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to select all of this and I'm going to copy it and I'm going to clear this screen here. I made this into a new note by mistake. We don't need this. I'm going to delete that. I'm going to clear this screen. I'm going to paste this question back in here. And I didn't know if it was going to disappear when I cleared the screen. That's why I copied it. 
So while it's doing that, we're going to go back over here and we know we have Arthurian legend. So I'm going to bookmark this using another keyboard shortcut. And now this is pinned so I can open new tabs and switch between tabs and that one won't close. So I'm going to switch back over to this tab, the one that says Merlin, because this is the one we're working on now. And I'm going to pin this one, too. So we're going to go command shift one. And this is our current date that we're working on. Now, we don't need to pin either of these because if we use the command T tab, tab is just going to open up a brand new date note and we can scroll to the bottom and see where we left off. We can also use a history plugin that we have here and that will show us the most recent 500 notes that we've opened and we can adjust this to be 5 or 15 or 25. It doesn't matter. I just have this one set for 500 and I, I'm thinking about making it smaller because this is a lot of stuff to look at. It's kind of overwhelming depending on the state of mind that you're in when you come in here to work. So let's go back over to the AI and see. So it's doing this thing again where it looks like nothing has come out. So we're just going to hit send and see if it put some random text in there. Yeah, something went wrong. I don't know what's going on here. So there's our there's our answer. Key characters and theme. All right. So what I'm going to do, tell us everything you know about Arthurian legend, both histor historical in, fic in fiction. So this thing is acting weird. I'm going to try this one more time. We're going to drop this in here. Hit enter. Now we're going to go back over here to our notes. I'm going to just going to go up here to the top and I have a couple notes that link out to the internet, Tanthropic and ChatGPT. These are two other AI services that I use. So we'll just go to ChatGPT. It's going to open this in the browser. And the browser that I'm using is called uh, here, let me paste this question in here first. All right, so we got this question. It's going to start generating an answer. The browser that I'm using is called Arc, and you can find that at the website, the browser company. And you can just go up here, get Arc, and it'll have uh, whatever version of PC you're on. This is a Mac that I'm on, and there's a Mac version, so this is a Mac version I'm using. I'm not sure if they have released the Windows version yet. But this is the browser that I'm using, and I'll show you a little bit about this since we're here waiting on this to finish. But the main thing is, is that we can pin links up here at the top, and then we can open, like these are all bookmark links that we have here, so we can save our links. And then anything new that we open is going to be down here, and we can create new tabs with all different kinds of things. And we can also move between spaces, so I'm going to close that. I don't need that. Close that too. And if we go back to Anthropic, it's probably stop typing. We'll see. We need to go back up here to the top. All right, there we go. Untitled and the original name. Nope. All right, so we're going to paste this here again and have it start generating. While it's doing that, I'm going to show you some more features. So down here in Arc, if we scroll down, we can set different workspaces. In those workspaces, we can have different tabs, different bookmarks, different everything, essentially. And so this makes it somewhat easier to work on different projects in different places sometimes. All right. So um, and these can be separate, too. So they can be they can act as complete different pieces of software, meaning that you can log into a Gmail account on this one and you can have this tab completely. You can have this grouping of items completely separate from the other grouping of items and the pat the passwords can't be shared between both of these so you could log into two different gmail accounts from one browser just in different workspaces i think these are what those are called so if we go back to anthropic here's our answer here about arthurian legend i believe here's an overview key aspects of arthurian legend so i'm just going to copy this grab this i'm going to go back to our notes and up here we have arthurian legend so we'll just take that and we can paste that in here so we've got Merlin. Merlin goes into Arthurian legend. We know we need to go in and, and make some updates to this or learn some more about this. And this, and all right, so there's another thing we can do. Like, let's say, for instance, we want to come back to this later on. We want to make sure we don't forget about it. We want to keep studying this for whatever reason. I'm going to make this note type. And this is just text. This is just a regular text file. Like if you had a Google Doc sheet or something like that. But in this particular application, when we when we write using a certain syntax 
that syntax when read by this application gives us the ability to link notes. So this right here is just text telling me what this section of the note is that I'm taking. So I'm just going to put note type and I'm going to put or not note type. I'm going to put note status and I'm going to set this to drafting drafting. All right. So this is another note called drafting that I link notes to. So if I go to that drafting note, not a lot going on here. But if we open up our backlinks, we have all these notes that have drafting associated with them. And if we go down here and we just sort this by the last modified notes, it'll show us the most recent note that we modified, which is Arthurian legend. So we know we're still drafting these systems or these notes. So before that, it was the system of nine. If I go here, the nine fundamentals the nine fundamental intellectual standards of critical thinking. Uh, and then I go into some different thoughts on thinking. And there's another note that's associated with this, uh, the foundations of societal control. And if you go down here, I have these sorted mod by modification time. And if I go in here, we can see that I'm working on this note is in a, it's not even in a drafting status. So I, I can do that while I'm here. I'm going to set this. So I'm going to go note status and we're going to set this to drafting as well drafting all right so in here the nine what did i call them here the foundations of societal control we've got economics education entertainment labor law politics religion sex and war and i'm going to cover each of these topics in future broadcasts along with every, probably everything else you see in here at some point but I wanted to point these out. So if we go back up here, we can see that I've changed these notes because this wasn't pinned. So I can go back. So I'm just going to hit the back button and I can go back to previous notes. Drafting. And so now we're back here to Arthurian legend and we have Arthurian legend here, Arthurian legend there. I can close this and I can go back over here and continue to work. So we've got Merlin, Arthurian legend, and then we've got our today note. We don't need that either. These are the two main things we're focused on. So we're reading about Merlin. That took us to Arthurian legend and it says in medieval Welsh poetry and we can turn we can turn this into another link too. like what is medieval Welsh poetry? What are some examples of medieval Welsh, Welsh poetry? So we can make this a new note. And we can open up the AI and we have some notes in here from we don't need these anymore. We can get rid of this. We're going to say uh, give us. Tell well, hold on. See what is. M E M E I D mid evil. So I spell that wrong. Let's go in here. I'm gonna right click and go. All right. There's a correct spelling. M E D I E V A L. What is medieval? Welsh R W E L S C H poetry. And are you able to give us some examples? And it's probably going to give us the, some notable examples. So that's why I didn't ask it specifically. We're going to leave this. I'm pretty sure this is spelled wrong. Um, it may be W-E-A-L-S-C-H. Let's go back to our notes real quick and check medieval W. All right. So we'll copy this. Go back into our AI. And look, our question is now gone. I think this is because maybe let's see. Let's see. All right, no problem. We can just write this again. So we'll say, what is M-E-D-E-I-V-A-L, medieval, spelled it wrong again, I-E-V-A-L, Welsh, W-E-L-S, poetry. And are you able to provide some examples? All right, so this is gonna go populate this i'm not going to switch because the the software has been acting weird lately but we can go back to merlin and see what's going on over here all right so the standard depiction of the character first appears in geoffrey of montmount's history regium britannia written in 1136 so this is a book and i'm going to put i'm going to modify this i'm going to put the year Eleven thirty six AD. And this is a part of my note taking system, and I'm going to show you why. 
in a sec. So we've got this note here, year 1136 AD. So I'm going to change this to uppercase T and change this to an uppercase Y. And what we're going to do is we're going to turn this into a note. So I'm checking to see, right, I have no year 1136 AD anywhere in my notes. So I'm going to turn this into a note, year 1136 AD. And the parent concept is going to be, of this note, is going to be year. And actually, hmm. I need to check something else. I can't remember how I how I did this before. All right, so what I'm going to do. So we've got this year, the year 1136 AD. I'm going to go to, I'm going to open up my backlinks and I don't have anything. All right, so I've got Merlin. What I'm looking for is another note with year in it. So let's go open the year. Let's open this one here. Merlin, that's not what we want. So I thought I had a note that linked all these years like this, but I just seem to have titled everything the year. So I can go to the year and we can go 1136 AD and we can see that that's related to Merlin and that's related to this book that he wrote in 1136 AD. So, or the book that was written by Geoffrey of Monmouth. Now, Geoffrey of Monmouth, what we can do is because this is a person, I have another way in the system to annotate this. So I'm going to go Geoffrey of Monmouths, and then we'll go new. And now we have a person, Geoffrey of Monmouths, and he's going to be related to, if we go back, the Historia Regum Britann Britannia. All right, so we'll make a new note here. And the parent of this note is going to be Mr. Geoffrey of Monmouth. And if we go close this and we go back here, the History Regium Britannia was written in the year 1136 AD. So we can go here and we can say written in the year 1136 AD. Now, when we go to the year 1136 AD and we look at our backlinks, we have Merlin is related to that, to the history, right? So down here, character first appears in Geoffrey Monmont's History Regium Britannia, written in the year 1136 AD, which predates most of the detailed Arthurian literature. However, and then it goes on to tell us more about that. So we can click right into that note and immediately begin to read about it. And this is how I keep notes. So I've gone a bit far on this one here. I didn't intend on going that deep. I don't even know if I'm still on the original topic of why I was making these notes, but I wanted to show you guys, I think that was the original uh, concept is to show you guys a way that I use the computer and a few, diff a few different applications as well as YouTube in order to study and learn new things. So if we go all the way back down here to the bottom, we started here with this command of money in abundance like Merlin. And then we were like, well, who's Merlin? And then that took us down this rabbit hole. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab this note, make this a brand new note, and I'm going to make this note a golden note. So if I go here and just go golden, now this note, it relates to all of the other golden notes. And golden notes are notes that contain what I believe are some sort of wealth of knowledge that can be shared. So if we go here to this one here, for instance, Casadero Labs feature backlog, this is a golden note because this is a backlog of features for software that I could use in the future. So let's just take a look. All right, we set the note type on this page to node, meaning that it is a note, right? So I'm telling myself here that this is a node note, which means that there's a lot of other notes that link to this note because this note contains some sort of knowledge that I want to share across notes. In this particular case, 
is drafting. This is the drafting note, and we have all the backlinks for drafting. So let me go back here. So golden notes. Let's see if we can find another one. If you go down here, ancient history. So I've been I study a lot of religion, ancient history, uh, esoteric texts, things like that. And let's see where what screen am I on actually? All right, yeah. So let's go back over here. A lot of ancient wisdom, esoteric texts, things like that. So I have a couple links in here. The most shocking ancient civilization cover-ups of all time. Now, I save these things because they say stuff. So when I go back and I listen to them or I go to these links, like I've got ancient history here, you know, I, I'll just be reading and I'll come across something that's interesting. Like I may be like, well, why is the Stone Age called the Stone Age? Or look at all these images. What are these? Who is this? Never seen this before. It's an interesting looking guy. And now I can go and research this, right? So we got the Indus Priest King statue. Indus Priest King statue. All right, so where did this come from? The statue is 17.5 centimeters high and carved of a stalite, a.k.a. soapstone. It was found in Mahinjo Daro in 1927. So for instance, for this, I might copy this image, right? So I'm going to go copy image and then we'll copy this text Mahinjo Daro. And we can go right back into our note application and here where we're looking at this ancient history right i went to this link and it told me about mahinjo daro so i'm gonna go in here and we're going to paste in that text mahinjo daro and we will go new and inside of here we can paste that image that we copy we copied we can go back here and we can grab the description of this image right so this is the indus priest king statue copy that go back to our notes and we are just going to go right here to this image right here and we are going to change this text up here at the top to what this is and we can't have this dash right here and i'm going to put the date that this was added in here too so we'll go here and we'll go 2024 and we added this in February and we added this on the seventh or eighth day. So we'll go zero eight and we'll go AD. And another way that I write these is like this. So we just have year, month, day, but they're all one thing. And we go AD and then sometimes I'll put the time. So we've got the time 2334. So we can go 2334. And now we have an image inside of our system. And there is more features that we can add to this as i'm talking about this i'm thinking about there is a way to have software look at the image and then describe what it is and give us a description for it so and i'm i maybe i can show this feature i'm not i'm not exactly sure if it'll work but we can try All right, so if we go here and we have we still have this image saved in our clipboard so mohenjo Dero. We can get more information about this, but before I do that, what I'm and I, I realize I just jump from subject to subject because I was talking about getting a description for this. So we're gonna say, um, let me go back, copy this. So now we have this here, and then underneath that, there was some more information that I wanted to retrieve about this. Oh. Mahinjo Dero, where is that location? And then and then this is on display in the National Museum in Karachi, Pakistan. So what we can do here is I believe I have the ability to add maps. So we can go map view and smart smart. There should be a way to insert local map place convert. And I can't remember exactly how to do it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to look inside of our plugins, which are all down here. And there should be a name that tells us that there's a, all right, so map view. That's what we're looking for, I believe. So we'll exit out of there. And then if I go back down here, I'm just going to type command P, map view, open map view, add embedded map. All right, so I'll go add embedded map and we are going to grab our location. And it brings it up right here. So we have Mohenjo Daro, uh, 
Dorky Tokalaka district. All right, Pakistan. All right, so they're both same place. So we've got the map here. And what we can do is we can zoom out a little bit. We can see that Pakistan's right there. And we can make some adjustments to this. So we can, I'm going to go here. And let's see, we've got light, Cardo DB, reset, update, dark auto. I'm going to save this. And it's going to save it at this length. And also what we can do, I believe, is display in the National Museum of Karachi, Pakistan. All right, so let's see if we can find this here. Copy. And let's go map again, I believe. Command P, uh, map. See, I forgot, I forgot the... Um, I forgot what it's called, map view. I forgot what it's called already. So we'll do it again. Command P and then map view. It's gonna be add an embedded map. And then let's see if we can paste this in here, National Museum. So we got the National Museum just popped right up, right? Drop that right there. So we can see Pakistan is here. And actually let's see, uh, yeah, I'm gonna leave that there. Karachi. So this is where this is 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 in the well. Hold on, let me see. All right, there we go. So we can save, and now we've got Karachi and we've got Pakistan, and we could we could take this a bit further actually. So we could go National Museum Karachi Pakistan. We can make this a new note. I'm going to go back to the other note. And we can copy this information here. Command C. And if we go here, we can paste that there. Now, the one thing I don't know how to do, at least not yet, is open this inside of the... Oh, there we go. So we can open in Google Maps. So if we go out to Google Maps, it'll open this inside of... Maps. So we can see where Pakistan is, not exactly where the museum is, but in that area. And we can paste this in here too. So we just paste. This should bring it up right here. All right. So now we got the National Museum of Karachi, Pakistan. We can zoom out a little bit. And there may be a way to open this on Google Earth as well but this is good so we'll copy this so we've got this information here so we can go share and we can copy link go back to our notes and we can paste this right here in our notes if we want to so we'll paste that right there and now we're going to quit this application i'm going to quit everything i'm going to quit the browser we're right back here at our desktop and then I'm going to go and open this back to show you that our notes are still there. Now, there's more features that we can use inside of our notes. There's all kinds of stuff. But this is this is what I was studying at this particular point in time. So now we have notes that tell it that give us a lot of information about a lot of different stuff. So we ancient history. Close that. Let's look at our history real quick. So if we go over here to our history. So we've been through a lot of notes, right? We start, so there's, this is the date that we started at. Command of money and abundance like a Merlin. We looked at our drafts. We don't need to see that. We looked at the golden notes. We don't need to see that. We looked at the Indus Priest King statue, which is a part of, of one of these other notes, right? So it could be this one here, let me see. Yep, so that note's inside of there. And then we have our maps that are in here. And they, what'll happen is, is if we close this, I believe if we leave and then we come back, when we look at these maps, you can see that they reset. Now we can move in and out and do all this kinds of other stuff, but we can get them to go back to their original location just by switching from the note and switching back. And there may be another way to do this. I just don't know. 
exactly uh, what it is right now. So let's go back there. So I still have some more research that I want to do on Mohenjo-daro. Like, where did that name come from? Right? Like, what is the origins behind this name? So here again, I can go essentially wind up making more notes. So we can go into our AI and we can say, what are the zoom in here so you can see what are the origins of the name so we can say what are the origins etymology meaning description and translations of the name Mohenjo-daro, or it will put name and or place and or people of people Mohenjo-daro. All right, so we'll go send. And this thing is gonna work its magic. I'm gonna close this up here. And so it's just gonna, it's spitting out our answer, still working. We'll switch back over here to our notes. So we've gone through quite a few notes, right? So we started here on our day we got command of money in this priest king, which is this image here. And that image, that image of that priest king is in from Mo, Mohenjo-daro, but it is it's in the National Museum of Karachi, Pakistan right now, which is right in this priest king statue, 17.5 uh, meters high, carved from soapstone. Right. So this I don't have any notes for soapstone, so we can go and make notes on soapstone if we want to and there is an actual hardness scale so hardness right the mole scale of hardness and we can go into the mole scale of hardness and we can actually find soapstone on this scale where is it at okay site like talk all right so i don't see it on here all right so we're gonna so we can act we can ask the question where is soapstone on this scale so we can close that and we can say uh where is soap stone on the mo mo's scale of hardness all right and as well as we can say as well as what are the major and a minor properties, including major and minor, including uh, piezo, piezo electrical, electrical magnetic, magnetic magnetic and static electrical properties elect and i know i spell piezoelectric wrong so let's go here look up so we're going to look this up it'll bring up the dictionary and try to spell it for us all right perius all right so it doesn't know we have a note in here piezoelectric i believe it's spelled p i S O All right, so let's see if we can look at look up this property. So we're gonna go back out to the browser real quick and we're gonna say piezoelectric. All right. All right, to our notes including P-I-E-Z, piezo, piezo. And then I have this note here, what is piezoelectric, what is piezoelectricity, right? So, what I'm attempting to do is just put the word in here so we can search for this piezo electric all right okay so we'll copy this 
and we can go back into the AI and copy uh, the origins and etymology of Mohenjo-daro. Copy that. I'm going to clear this out, paste in our new question. Oh, that's not what I wanted to do. Clear this out again. Clear this out again. All right, stop generating and clear. All right, now we'll paste in our new question about soapstone. And we can go back out here to Mohenjo-daro and paste our description right in there. All right, team. So I think we're going to wrap this one up here. What I wanted to do is just give you a breakdown as well as to show you some information that you might find useful and beneficial team. Now, the applications that I used in here, uh, the one that I really didn't cover all that much was the actual Obsidian application. But if you go out to the Internet and go to Obsidian, let's see obsidian.md you can download a copy of this and once you get it downloaded and installed when you open it it's going to look fairly plain right it's not going to look like this what you're going to end up with is you're going to have a vault and your vault is going to be simple it's not going to have anything in it and you can add plugins to it so if you go down here to this system icon and click there you can go up to the top and you can turn on the community plugin. So if you go to community plugins, right, and turn that on, turn on community plugins, you'll get these options. Restricted mode is turned on and going to browse. And in here, you can type just about anything that you're looking for and it'll pull it up. So you can go, for instance, um, spreadsheets. And then in here, you can find a plugin that someone's created, create spreadsheets and easily embed them in Markdown. All right, so we can go in here. And we can look at exactly what they're telling us in a lot of these places they have demos if we run to read more we can go to the repository link this is the actual code for this plugin so if you want to learn the code as well you can just click on this link and it'll open it in the browser and you can go view this out on the internet as well and you can actually copy this code and modify it if you wanted to but first you have to read and understand you know what the code is supposed to do and there's typically some sort of readme file inside of the folder for software and so well this is the readme file for this and it tells you how to use the software it doesn't talk about the functions and how they're all put together and how this software is written so in order to find that out you may have to go through the actual documentation of the source code and find a different readme file that may be located inside of the actual code itself but at any rate this is how a lot of the code on the internet is stored and that's how you get to it. And all right, so let's see if we go back to Obsidian. So that's how you would get to the page. And once you installed it, so if we hit installed, it's going to ask us, do we want to enable? We can hit enable and you can see an icon popped up over here for spreadsheets. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to exit out of here, click here and we can add a spreadsheet and we can add in our numbers. So I paid some bills, right? And uh, I transferred money, right? That was two grand. And then I paid another bill for 500. And I paid another bill for 500. And then I paid another bill for 500. And we can say the total, so we'll go equal is sum. All right, let me get the sum there, and now we'll select the, ah, oh, what happened? Sum. All right, so we're going to have to do this old school. So it looks like it's going to be A2 uh, to A somewhere else. I can't remember how to, there should be, I'm going to check. Let me say, all right, well, we, there, now there's an Excel function up here. This is the sum button right here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab these, go all the way down to that one right there. And we're going to hit this sum button, sum and not a number. It's saying not a number because one of these doesn't have numbers in it, or maybe they all don't. So I might have to change these to just numbers, 500, 500, 500. Now we've got ourselves an actual number and we may have to format these. So if we go down here, let's see if we could format. Doesn't look like it. So we may have to do it from perhaps up here somewhere maybe. Normal Helvetica 
font bold. All right, so there doesn't seem to be, you know, the fancy formatting that we get in regular Excel. So we're just going to have to use regular math, but this is a way to get started and it makes it easier for us to write spreadsheets or easy for us to write spreadsheets inside of Markdown. Now, if I want to get rid of this because I don't need this plugin, I can just go back here, community plugins, and we could either turn it off so we can say disable or we can say uninstall. And when it uninstalled, it's just going to completely uninstall and go away. And when we go back to our note, right, that note is not available anymore. So that's that team. This is the program Markdown. The other program I used was the Arc browser. You can find that at the browser company. And you can find a lot of these uh, links at my website, The Real Casadero, and also Casadero Labs, which looks S A D A R O, which looks a lot similar. D S A D A, which looks similar to that one there. I've been saying that I'm going to redo these for years, add more links, take things away, do things like that. I'll get around to it. But until next time, team, I'm your biggest fan of the real Casadero. Thanks for hanging out with me here. I hope you found all that helpful. If you have any questions, just leave a comment below. If you want to get more videos like this, you know what to do. You can also subscribe to the channel. I mean, well, subscribe to a newsletter if you go to f0110w.com. And I'm going to start yeah, just read about the news. Well, what's going on here? F0110. All right, there we go. So, yeah, you can just read the site and learn about the newsletter. And when I start releasing new newsletters, you'll get those two team. And that is it, I believe. Yeah, I feel like this page shouldn't look like this. That's why I'm still here looking. There should be a, a sign up deal. So maybe you have to click the sign up button at the bottom. But that's that team. Thanks a lot. Thanks for hanging out with me here. I'm your biggest fan. I look forward to seeing you in the next broadcast team.